Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to the first Chinese special of the new year. And boy, is it a cracker. It's the Full Metal Skme Shock. Oh, how I laughed. Now, I'm crossing a personal line here today. I never really understood the point of Skme. Why would anyone spend $16 on a copy when you could buy the Casio for $19? It just didn't make sense. This one, however, makes an awful lot of sense. Now, I've reviewed a couple of full metal Casios and they're great watches. They're really a lot of fun, but they don't do an awful lot and they're 400 US dollars. Do you really want to beat a G-Shock that costs 400 bucks? I'm not so sure. This, for 20, I will beat it to within an inch of its life. Now, the thumbnail says $20. That's the most you should be paying for this watch. I'll leave a link in the description of the video to the place on Ali that I got mine, the Skme watch store. They've got the full range, five different colors for $19.20. Somewhat inexplicably, they've also got the black one and the silver one for less than 13 US dollars. So use that link as your starting point and then dig around on Ali for the best price. No shortage of vendors selling these. And I must say, I've been really quite impressed. There's a few rough edges here and there, but you'd expect that on a watch costing less than 20 bucks. So full review coming up, dimensions and specifications, etc, etc. Then I'm going to show you some torture testing footage to see how one of these SME shocks gets on in sub-zero conditions, 100 mile an hour biting winds and 70 centimeters of snow. It's obviously not my footage. I live in Sydney. That just doesn't happen. It's a guy who's got one in Canada. Let's flip the camera and get on with it. And there it is, quite remarkable. For less than $20, they even give you a hang tag. Now, I've got a seven inch wrist. This one's sized up nicely for me. I reckon there's enough spare links in here for maybe an eight, eight and a quarter inch wrist and an instruction manual. To be honest though, they're fairly intuitive to work these things. It doesn't operate in quite the same way as a Casio, but really, once you've worked one digital module, you've worked them all. So 43 and a half millimeters in diameter, less than 11 mil thick, I measure at 10.8. Now, lug tip to lug tip, where my fingers are, where my thumbs are, that's about 47 mil. However, as you can see here, the first lug looks quite different, looks like it's made from a different material. There's only the vaguest bit of articulation there. So that does rather extend the effective lug to lug. It does curve downwards, but if you're a guy with say six and a half inch wrists or smaller, I really don't think this one is gonna suit you because of that extension, basically, extended lug to lug. So big guys only for this one, I'm afraid. 145 grams sized up for my seven inch wrist. They quote 157 in the advert. I'm guessing that includes all the spare links. Zinc alloy, again, the, the advert states zinc alloy. They found something even cheaper than stainless steel to make the watch with. I've been wearing this one on and off for the last week. It has certainly left no nasty marks on the back of my arm and I've had no reactions to it whatsoever. I'm guessing there's some stainless steel on the bracelet, that bracelet clasp. Certainly looks like stainless steel to me, but a, a zinc alloy head. Also, they just call it glass. Again, I'm guessing that's a piece of mineral crystal covering the dial. And as you can see there, countdown timer, the usual spec sheet, just like a Casio. Dual time, water resistance, three bar, 30 meters. Now, I have had the back off this and there is a rubber seal here. I'll show you Jamie from Mad Rock Watches and Adventures footage later on. He certainly left this one out in a veritable snowstorm and rain and had no ill effects. Would I be personally taking this one swimming? I'm not so sure about that. I wouldn't really be comfortable taking a $10, $15 watch swimming at the best of times. But there you are, it's even got that fake brick pattern there, like the Casio Solar, but this is not solar. It takes one CR2025, it even advertises the battery type on the back. Pop the back off yourself, squeeze it back on yourself. $1 battery, this one should hopefully run and run if that module is any good. So what features do we have? Well, top right here, flips it between 12 and 24 hour mode. I will take it into my dark room, AKA my bathroom, and I'll show you how those twin LED lights work. One on either side of the screen, orange, Slightly odd color, but very, very effective looking at this one after dark. The bottom right hand button, if you hold the bottom right hand button down, it brings it into set mode. There you are, once again to get it out of set mode. And the bottom left is the usual mode, just as it would be on a Casio. So one click brings up an alarm, it's a single alarm. Second click brings up a stopwatch, start, stop, reset. Pretty straightforward. Third click, dual time. Fourth click, countdown timer. Fifth click, back to the main time. And as you can see there, day of the week, month, 
and date. That's pretty much it guys. It's a very simple basic digital module. Pretty much all you need from a watch at this price. That is the case back if you're interested. Couple of scratches because I popped it off. As I said, there's a rubber seal there. Conveniently advertising what battery it is you need to buy from eBay for a dollar when the time comes to replace it. Water resistant, three atmospheres and a picture of a swimmer there. Ah, you're a braver man than I am if you do that. But hey, why not? The bracelet's actually all right. Just push pins here. No complaints about that. Looks pretty good on the top. And the clasp is basic, but it does have four levels of micro adjust. So the chances are you're going to get a good comfortable fit with this one. On wrist, it wears just like its far more expensive Casio cousin. Nice and legible. Like I said, the lack of articulation of those links mean even on my seven inch wrist, there's a little bit of overhang. Let me swap wrists. It fits my right wrist better. My right wrist is about seven and a quarter inches. I reckon this is kind of getting towards the sweet spot for this watch. So like I said earlier on, one for larger wristed gentlemen, I would suggest. Outside in some natural light, it looks shiny, 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 just like the regular G-Shock does. I went for the silver one, by all means, go for the gold, go for the black one, go for the blue one, go for whatever one it is that you fancy. They're definitely statement watches, these things. And I think if you're buying a $15 SME as a statement watch, you've got your tongue firmly in your cheek. Moans and niggles, dare I complain too much about a watch at this price? Well, as you can see here, the kind of brushing effect on the front isn't all that smooth water resist. Some of the printing could be done better, I guess the stamping could be done better. The clasp is perfectly acceptable, but nothing to write home about. Easily remedied though, if you want to drop another $10 on a 22 mil mil clasp from AliExpress, as I have done, spending $10 to upgrade the clasp on a $13 watch. Jody, you really are an idiot, aren't you? And certainly when I first got this one, I felt the buttons were a little bit sticky. They were just a little bit slow to respond, a little bit slow to reset, but this one seems to be getting better with time. I've got no problems pressing any of these buttons now. So on to the torture testing footage then. This footage was taken by Jamie of Madrock Watches and Adventure. I had a chat with him, I asked was it all right if I used permission in return for a plug and I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. If you wanna check out his SME torture testing videos, give him a sub as well while you're at it. Now he bought two of these, one for him and one for his son. He zip tied his watch to a chair and left it out in the harsh Canadian winter. And when I say harsh, I mean harsh. 100 kilometer an hour winds, a snow dump of over 70 centimeters and weather down to minus 15 degrees centigrade. Sometimes I'm really glad that I live in Sydney. So far, so good for this me. It came through with flying colors. Certainly I would not have expected that from a $15 watch. I think Jamie is determined to destroy this watch one way or another. I think he's gonna vibrate it to death or drop it from a great height or whatever. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe to his channel. But like I said in the beginning, this to me has been a rather pleasant surprise. I'm not sure I'm gonna rush out and buy everything else in this me catalog. I think this will probably do it for me. As I said, I don't really get some of the ones that are far, far closer in price. But at 20 bucks, even if you do pay 20 bucks, that's still 5% of the cost of the Casio, which is the old homage sweet spot in my humble opinion. And this thing has an awful lot going for it. Not too many negatives, frankly. So there you have it, the full metal SME shock. Definitely one of the bargains of the year for less than 20 bucks. And it's a watch that you can rattle around and not actually give a toss about because it's less than 20 bucks. You can't really say the same with one of those $400 Casios, I don't think anyway. So if you're looking for a cheap beater or you just want to troll your friends who did drop 400, I can highly recommend one of these. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.